How's it going everyone and welcome back to the Enclave South Africa's premier firearms education channel. So today we are going to start with module one safety of the handle and use of a self-loading rifle or carbine for business purposes. Hopefully everyone could see that. So for those of you who are veterans of the channel i do appreciate you being here i know this is stuff you've heard i think six times now um but it is what it is we we do need to get these books done otherwise my ocd is not going to let me rest so starting with safety safety rules as always, are the universal safety rules. They are what they are all the time. I actually did hear them recited in a different order the other day, and it caught me off guard. Always keep the firearm pointed in a safe direction, finger off the trigger. Always keep your finger off the trigger until ready to fire. Sorry, sort of combined those two there. Always treat a firearm as if it's loaded. Now, this is the one that was moved to number one importance. And I'm not going to say that personally I disagree with that. But always keeping the firearm pointed in a safe direction, whether the firearm is loaded or not, it is irrelevant. Always keeping your finger off the trigger. Whether the firearm is loaded or not is more crucial. So, I mean, I, I'm not saying it's best practice, okay? Because it really is. But if I were finger off the trigger, waving this gun around, it would not nearly be as dangerous as if I had my finger on the trigger and I was waving it around like an idiot. You know, that, that automatically makes things a whole load worse. But if you obey the keep the firearm in a safe direction and your finger off the trigger, this doesn't mean anything. You should always know the condition of your firearm. But if you maintain trigger discipline and muzzle discipline, in my opinion, those two come first. Then knowing whether your firearm is loaded or unloaded or always treating the firearm as if it's loaded, you know? So for me, that, that is just something I disagreed with that trainer. Um, I actually attended a, a different training class just as an observer. Um, and then finally, we have always know your target and what is beyond it. For the business purposes, your target is going to be pretty obvious to you, um, especially in like the CIT fields, in the sort of armed response fields. The bad guy is going to be the guy trying to get you, you know? So there, knowing your target is, is quite obvious. In my opinion safe direction so we always keep the firearm pointed in a safe direction but what is a safe direction safe direction is generally 45 degree angle and yeah basically pointing at the floor at about a 45 degree angle if you're in a room you generally want to aim at the point where the floor and the wall meet so at that 90 degree point, you will be aiming at a 45 degree angle. In parking lots, you would use the pavement in the same fashion at that 45 degree angle into the 90. So you would shoot or not shoot, but you know, point firearm into the pavement. You could use the dirt like you want to avoid hard paving, things like that, but soft ground, you'll be fine. A tree stump, 
and sort of worst case scenario, the wheel of a car. Um, obviously, you don't want to be damaging other people's property over the stump of a tree, but if it's what you got, it's what you got. And most likely the rim slash axle slash brake discs are going to stop most rounds, you know. Um, then we get into the safe direction in shopping centers. Now, safe directions in shopping centers can be quite difficult because obviously you've got people everywhere. And even keeping your firearm at a 45 degree angle, you've got people walking right next to you, you know, within a two meter distance. Your muzzle is still pointed at them. Um, it might just hit them in the leg, but remember, femoral arteries, that's a serious problem. If you get hit in the femoral artery, you do not have much time to react before things go sideways. So you always want to either keep things pointed directly down in a shopping center. But yeah, that, that is pretty much the safe direction for a shopping center. Um, <clears throat> Finally, on the shopping center, if you do need to shoot in a shopping center, what you want to do is get to the kneeling position so that the muzzle of your firearm is pointed upwards. That way, any missed shots will go up into the ceiling or into the high walls instead of being eye level with other people you know so that is a very important thing safe direction in vehicles finally you always just want to keep the firearm pointed away from any bulletproof glass if you're in a vehicle with bulletproof glass or away from any glass in general for the reason that if a round goes off that glass will either shatter or it will splinter or it will do whatever it's going to do. You, you never really know, you know. And you don't need those shards of glass going into your eyes, ears, nose, and mouth, you know, etc. All the vital holes of the body. So, yeah, you always want to keep the firearm pointed down into the footwell and away from any armor as such. Also want to avoid ricochets. So, moving on. Safety precautions. When do we carry out safety precautions? This is universal through all the books. When receiving a firearm, so when someone hands you a firearm, you want to make sure that it is pure and safe. Before handing over a firearm, so before you hand someone a firearm, especially someone untrained or unexperienced or whatever, with firearms, you definitely want to make sure you do safety checks. But even with experienced people, you just want to make sure, you know. And before cleaning a firearm, a lot, a lot, I don't want to say majority because I'm not 100% sure, but a lot of injuries and deaths from firearms have been during the cleaning process. People clean loaded firearms. No, 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 no. I, I, like, no. I, I don't even know what else to say other than just no. Don't do it. Just don't do it. <laughs> okay, so how to carry out safety precautions with self loading rifle or carbine? So we always start with identifying a safe direction. Pointing the firearm in safe direction, finger off the trigger. We then want to remove the source of feed, i.e. the magazine. We want to pull the charging handle to the rear and inspect the chamber and the magazine well. At that point, the rifle has been safety precaution. Can then make sure it's on safe. Uh, it also depends on the rifle. Some rifles 
you have to actually put them on fire to be able to cycle and then put them back on safe. Others, you can actually cycle the bolt with the rifle still on safe. That is going to depend on the rifle. But either way, that is the procedure. Safety catch. That, like I say, different on every firearm. Most firearms. Muzzle conscious, as always, like we said, be muzzle conscious. Ear and eye protection. And as always... As always, I do not have my ear pro here with me because it's in my recording bag because that way they never get left behind. So, you always want to wear ear and eye protection when shooting firearms. When in an outdoor setting, ear plugs will be sufficient. When in an indoor setting, you need, you can choose to have ear plugs and ear muffs over ear coverings or just the over ear coverings but you do need to have proper noise cancelling ear protection indoors for the simple reason and this is in your test the vibrations will damage the inner ear bones um, the actual vibrations of the sound bouncing off the walls and the, the soundproofing and things like that. So, range rules, range commands, those are up to you. Safe carry conditions, those are also up to you. Okay, let us get into the how to carry out a safety inspection so as always we start by identifying a safe direction we point the firearm in a safe direction with our fingers off the trigger we then remove the source of feed i.e the magazine we will proceed to pull the charging handle to the rear this one isn't gonna lock here so it makes my life kind of difficult. You then take the cleaning rod in your support hand. You can change the position of the firearm when doing this, just to, you know, if you've got shorter arms, it can be sort of quite a reach, you know, if you can see that. So you can change the position of the firearm. Insert the rod all the way down the barrel. And then what you can do in a firearm like this is at that point, Pull the charging handle back and make sure you can see the cleaning rod in your chamber. Perfectly fine, perfectly acceptable, not an issue whatsoever. At that point, if you're going to be cleaning, you can attach any cleaning tools you may need. So, yeah, that is pretty much that for the Module 1 safety for the self loading rifle or carbine. As always, if you have any questions or anything to add, if you feel like I missed anything or you want some more clarification on any of those range rules or whatever, please feel free to let me know in the comments down below. If you got more time, check out another video here at the end. Otherwise, peace out.